Tokyo, the beating heart of modern Japanese society and culture, is attracting young people from throughout Japan, seeking an interesting modern lifestyle, work, and the adrenaline flowing in the streets. A five hours fast train ride southwest brings you to a completely different world. Here, hidden in the mountains along the Maruyama River, lies Toyoka, a small city surrounded by villages, rice paddies, and forests. Caution, it is only a false pastoral picture. Once you step out of the train station and into the main street, you might also be infected with stork madness. In every direction you look, you might notice its symptoms. Show windows. Sidewalks. Bread. Mineral water. Saki. The city hall building. The municipality's cars. All are marked with storks. The mayor himself has been stalk. leading the obsession for several years. And stalk. The oriental white stork with its black beak and light blue eyes was once widespread throughout Japan and lived happily in the small traditional rice paddies. The overuse of poisonous pesticides and the modernization in rice cultivation methods in the 1950s onwards caused the decline in the stork's food sources. Many species of invertebrates, amphibians, reptiles and fish became extinct and the remaining available food sources were contaminated with poison. The stork population declined rapidly until, in 1971, the last wild stork in the Toyooka area died, its death marking the extinction of the storks throughout Japan. Already in 1965, a breeding center for the storks had been established based on storks brought in from neighboring countries and from the occasionally wounded or poisoned migrating storks. However, it was evident that due to environmental conditions, releasing storks back into nature could not even be considered. The breeding center, which with the years grew and extended rapidly up to 20 hectares, included breeding and rehabilitation cages. When the center became too small, a new, much larger and modern center was added, extending over 160 hectares, controlled by a sophisticated system which enabled a real-time survey of each stork. The resident storks are treated with the best of food and living conditions. Traditional looking rice terraces and paddies were added to the landscape in the hopes that one day, if possible, the storks would be returned to nature. Every year, about $5 million are invested in the stork project. However, in spite of the encouraging breeding success of the center, many doubted that there would be any possibility of releasing the storks back into nature. The environment was still very poisonous and too unhealthy for them. The solution came from a totally unexpected direction. Autumn 2004. A typhoon, one of the strongest ever, hit the area bringing torrents of rain. The Maruyama River overflowed, flooding the rice paddies, the streets and houses, forcing many people to evacuate. But in addition to destruction, the typhoon brought Toyooka seeds of hope as well. Yuka Okada was about 10 years old during the typhoon. She had realized the link between the environmental destruction by people and the destruction outside. Intuitively, 
she understood the need to return to sustainable and organic farming that might one day bring the storks back to the paddy fields. After the meeting with children from the Nita Elementary School, I persuaded people to change people's awareness and make the environment better for stocks and humans. Our slogan is a good environment for stocks must be good for humans. Releasing stocks brought the farmers increased income. Now uh, they have pride in their job because uh, they are doing good job for good future. で、ここで、え、実際に野生のコウノトリが、あ、帰ってきましたですから、それをなんとか、あ、絶命させないように、え、これからずっとここに住み着いてくれるように私たちは願っておるわけです。陶器炭水をするためのマヤ作業として米